In this video, I'll show you how to get started with quizzes. Quizzes is a free online platform that I use with my math students. And I assign games, and the games give them a way to practice what they're learning. And also, it's quite engaging. And you can use this with other subjects besides mathematics. My name is Vicki. This is my Twitter handle. I do love teaching with technology, and quizzes is one of my favorite platforms. Students also really like quizzes. This is a screenshot of one of my choice boards that I use during this period of distance learning because of the COVID-19 pandemic. Our school was closed on March 12th, and we started using choice boards with our students, and every week they would have to complete an edge elastic test at the end of the week. And they could pick, I believe it was four other choices besides the edge elastic. And as you look over the list of choices that students are making, it's very clear that quizzes is a popular choice. And so the agenda for this particular training, I'll show you how to assign a quizzes live game and that's a game that you can play in class with students. And you can also play it like in a Zoom meeting with students. Then we'll look at the teacher dashboard. And then I'll show you how you can make your own quizzes game. So if I had students right now, I would ask them to mute their Zoom. I would ask them to mute their computer while we play a quizzes live game. And I'll show you how I would do that. So this is taking me to my quizzes dashboard. And you'll see that my name is over here, so I'm definitely logged in. In the beginning, these are just some things that quizzes thinks I would like, but all of the quizzes that I have on hand and I've saved in my collections are all over here. Anything that is the most recent quiz goes up to the top. So what I'm going to do is click on my quizzes. And I had this interesting quizzes game called Fun Facts for All Ages. And I was going to play with people during a Zoom session. And I would hit this button that says Play Live. And so when I hit this button that says Play Live, I have choices. Do I want to do a test mode, a team mode, or classic? If this was something that I was doing with students in a Zoom meeting, I would probably do classic. And I would hit Continue. And now what pops up is the URL that students need to type in called joinmyquiz.com, and then the game code. And what I do is I, as the teacher, am waiting for players to join the game. And as students enter this game, I see their names. And by the way, as a teacher, you want to let the student know, I need you to sign in using your first space last name. Now, there's two reasons for that. If we don't clarify how we want them to sign in. They could think they were funny and use inappropriate names, which wouldn't be so funny. Um, we'd have to remove them if they do that. But also, when students log in with their first and last names, then later on when I go to give them credit for completing the game, I can sort by the player's last name. And it just makes it easier for me to enter those grades in my grade book. So pretend that we're waiting for people to join the game. Pretend that there's six people in my class, in my Zoom class, and I'm waiting for six names to show up down here. Once those six names show up, then I say to students, OK, we're going to begin. And when we do, I'm going to hit Start. And all of a sudden, on the student's end, they see these questions coming. They answer the questions, and on my all I am showing the students is what's called a leaderboard. On the leaderboard, the student who uh, answered something correctly gets moved forward and then forward again, or moves back if they answered something incorrectly, forward, forward again, things like that. Uh, students' names go to the top of the leaderboard. And these are formative assessments. So this is um, 
I don't believe something that would cause students anxiety. I mean, you do have to have a rapport with students for them to see their name on the leaderboard. But that's what Quizzes Live is all about. I can't press start right now because it's saying that there are no players in the game. But when I when I do have players, I press start. And when I see that everybody's done, up here in the top right is this end game. And then it gives me a prompt. Are you sure you want to end the game? Yeah, I'm sure. And then what it does is it takes you to the summary of the different questions that you had asked. And it's a, quite a nice dashboard. It shows you each question how well students did, and how long it took them. And so after we play a Quizzes Live game, I very often will look at my dashboard and just talk to the students about any common mistakes we're seeing and any big ideas that I really want them to understand from the game. So that is how I would do Quizzes Live. So let's go back over to our slideshow and see what was next. So once again, on the, the teacher dashboard, and I will um, navigate to my dashboard and just show you some fun things that I've done with students in the, in the past. It, the dashboard shows you something like this. Like I recently gave this very question to students. And this is on a box plot or a box and whisker plot. And a real important concept that I want students to know is that the box plot breaks down the data into quartiles, what's called quartiles. So believe it or not, 25% of the data is between 40 and uh, 90 here. 25% is between 90 and 100. Another 25% of the data between 100 and 140, and 25% of the data here. Now you'll notice that quite a few students miss this question. What percent of the data is between 40 and 90? I would have hoped that they would have known that's 25% of the data. It tells me that there's a quite a misconception going on with the box plots that I'm going to need to reteach and help the students to understand. But I will show you how easy it is to navigate to your dashboard. And my, my motto regarding dashboards is I love anything with a dashboard because I do not want to be spending a lot of time hand scoring items. What I'd rather do is interpret and leverage that assessment data and help it inform my instruction. So I'm going to go to my dashboard and show you how I would look at a test that I had done. So I go over here to reports. And when you go to report, you need to know the name of the test that you had assigned. So oh, let's say I wanted to look at this one, which was pretty recent on univariate statistical graphs. And I don't really want to look at the players' names right now just for the sake of anonymity, but instead I'll look at the questions. So I clicked on questions and hope that their names don't show up. Oh, yay, their name doesn't show up. And um, as I look at the, I can even look at overview. Oh, but I think their names are there. Yeah, I better not do that. Okay, so we'll look at um, the questions. And we can see that for this first question, it looks like, a lot of players answered this one correctly. So they understand that when we're talking about median and it's a line plot, they know how to do that. So I'm gonna scroll down and look for something where there seems to be quite a lot of red or a common misconception. Like this one here, there is a common misconception that's very clear. And so that misconception is each of the four sections on a box plot represents what percent of the data. There's that thing where a lot of students don't understand that it's 25% of the data for each section. So that's just something for me to keep in mind that I need to go back and review with students. And I can go down this, and some of these are quite obvious for them. I'm just going to scroll and look. Oh, okay, so here's so that's the one we already showed you. So most of these were, were pretty easy for students. Others, there were clear misconceptions. So here's another one where there's a clear misconception. How many teachers spent three or more hours grading? Now, there's either a clear misconception or I might have a mistake in my answer key. So let's double check on this one. Okay, so I'm going to click on this. 
How many teachers spent three or more hours grading? It looks like one, two, three, four teachers there, five, six, seven, eight. And so eight people, um, the 48% of the class answered correctly um, that it should be eight. Other people thought four teachers. So they're interpreting these numbers underneath the dot plot as if these represent teachers. So we need to let the students know that each of these X's on a dot plot represents the data of a particular teacher. So of all the teachers surveyed, um, the fewest number of hours spent grading, a bunch of teachers spent only two hours grading, Other two of the teachers uh, spent six hours grading. So how many teachers spent three or more hours grading? We need to look at that. So that's how I would use my, my dashboard to help inform my instruction. And after you give um, a homework assignment to students, the next day they come in, it's really good to look at that dashboard so that they understand where they went wrong. All right, so now we'll look on at our training. And I live in Massachusetts, as you know, and the Commissioner of Education uh, recently in 2020, in April, sent something out to the districts and principals and superintendents. And I really appreciated what he had to say, that in a remote learning context, making core instruction engaging for students is more important than ever. Uh, there's many ways to maximize student engagement through remote learning, including gamified self-paced learning platforms that provide frequent feedback. And frequent feedback of student work with celebrations of progress. So students really like to see that they're improving. And what's nice about quizzes is you can allow more than one attempt and their score can get higher um, as they complete a second attempt or even a third attempt. And the commissioner also said to offer meaningful connections between student and teacher. So you could play a quizzes live game with your Zoom class um, so that you're playing and having fun with your students. But another thing that's important is that we should, as teachers, prioritize what's called asynchronous format of lessons and assignments. And quizzes allows you to assign the work in an asynchronous way. And we'll explain what we mean by that. So for online learning, the two important, really important words are synchronous, which means happening at the same time, or asynchronous which is happening at different times. Learning um, that is synchronous, you can use quizzes to play a quizzes live game with students. If you're doing distance learning, you can do it in the Zoom or Google Meet. In the classroom, you can also use synchronous learning by doing a quizzes live game, even a homework game. I go up to the front of the board and I play a homework game and I might not shuffle the questions I might not shuffle the answer choices because I want to lead a whole class discussion on these questions that are popping up. Now, I might not give the answers to students, but we can have a discussion as a whole class about what's important about each question. What should you pay attention to to help you answer this correctly? So that's what we mean by synchronous, happening at the same time. Um, and then I had a comment here that when the game ends, that we can show the class questions which prove to be more challenging and address, address common misconceptions. Okay, now asynchronous. You want to uh, provide work, especially during this period where the schools are closed, that allows students to complete work on their own time because everybody's family is going through different things now. And um, so if you assign a practice game or flashcards, Students can, on quizzes, they can complete that at their own time. A homework option is one of my favorite ways to do asynchronous assignments. You assign the homework, students complete it at a time that's convenient for them, and you as the teacher are going to decide on how many attempts do you want to give them. Should each question be timed or not timed? Should you show the leaderboard? Should you show memes? 
Do you want to include uh, music? So there's a lot of really fun features that you as the teacher can decide what to include in your homework game. If you assign it as a homework game, you will have a data dashboard. You will have information how your students did on that homework game. However, if you assign a practice link or flashcards, you won't be able to see how students do. So things to keep in mind. So you are either a beginner, and I, of course, everybody is a beginner at one point on quizzes, um, then you become an intermediate, and then you're an advanced quizzes uh, user. So for a beginner, it's easy enough. You log into quizzes. It's a free platform. You join using your Google. You find a quiz. You click on it and make sure that it seems like what you're looking for. And I always make sure that my answer key is correct. And if everything looks kosher, you can just immediately play that live if you're with students or assign it as a homework um, assignment or a practice link. Then for the intermediate users, the only difference is that instead of just jumping from finding a quiz to assigning it, you might find that quiz, duplicate it, edit some items, remove some items, add more. That's called teleporting some items, which is pretty cool. And then, um, then you can assign it to your class. Now an advanced user on quizzes often will create their own quiz and you can author your own items. There's a lot of different item types now that Quizzes has created, and you can explore those item types. You can add images, math type, and so all kinds of fancy formulas if you're a math teacher. And then when you're done, you publish your test, and you can add your test to what's called a collection. A collection is just a folder of resources that your Quizzes games go in might be your um, it might be your unit two quizzes or your unit three. Um, if you're an elementary teacher, you might have all of your science quizzes in one folder and your ELA quizzes in another folder. So the steps for creating a game. It's really not difficult. Um, it's pretty intuitive, but I think having some icons here to show you what we mean for each step could be helpful. So for step number one, when I say find a quiz, you'll see this little icon on your dashboard and you click that um, magnifying glass icon and you type in the name of the quiz that you're looking for, whatever the content is. And I always have the button show answers on because that tells me if whoever made this quiz, um, their answer key is correct. So let's say you're a beginner user, you've done that, and everything looks good. You can literally jump right to the, to the assigned step. But if you're noticing that there's one question that really doesn't pertain to your topic and you want to edit this quizzes, then there's a duplicate button. I'll show you what it looks like. It's, it looks like a copy button, but that's what you need to push to edit your quiz your quizzes game and so once you do that you can edit your items and I'll show you there's a lot of icons for edit there's the pencil icon that allows you to edit individual questions you can add math type which is that f of x that formula looking uh, icon you can change the pull down menu for the amount of time that you have allotted each question so 30 seconds is the shortest amount of time, and I think it goes all the way up to like 10 minutes or something like that. Um, I usually keep mine at, I think, two minutes, um, depending on what the math is that I want the kids to do. And you can get rid of any image that's there by just Xing out of your um, image, and then you can upload a new image if you want but then you're definitely going to need to hit the save button. So let's say you've done all that and you're ready to um, just assign the test. Well, before you do, make sure you're happy with the title and you can just use the pencil button to change the title. 
Make sure you're happy with the default for the amount of time given for each question. You can just click that button and change the default for each question if you'd like. And then once you're done with all that, up at the very top of the page, there's a done button that you need to push. And then if you want to start um, collecting your quizzes in these folders or collections, it's the save button. And you type in the name of your collection that you want to save it in. So that's, that's the process of creating, you know, finding, maybe editing, revising, finishing, and assigning a quizzes game. So I can um, actually show you that too, but th this is really what I love about quizzes. And um, the, qui the bank that's there, the bank of ready-made quizzes is excellent. Very, very um, thorough. You can see how many times each quiz has been used and also how recent the quiz is. There are all kinds of ways to use quizzes. Of course, there's the live game that we talked about. You can play with teams. Kids love that. That's really fun. I think the flashcards are excellent, an excellent way of giving students practice with different, um, with the content that you're teaching. But the thing that most people are not aware of is you can also print a worksheet right from the quizzes dashboard. And I'll show you how to do that. And that's for somebody who, for instance, doesn't have access to internet, someone who has an accommodation where they need a paper copy of everything. So you can print the quiz, even though it's a digital platform. The homework mode is really my favorite one that, that I love to use the most. And then the practice game is good. It just gives you nothing as a teacher as far as the dashboard goes. I love that quizzes is pretty intuitive, easy to navigate. I love this way of organizing all of my quizzes. I have a lot of them because I've been using it a long time. And if I didn't have a way to store my quizzes into content like geometry, algebra, number sense, statistics, like I would have a hard time finding it. Um, and then of course the dashboard just simplifies my life so much. And who doesn't love a free, high-quality platform? So I think I want to go back to showing you how to make a game. So I guess I've got to go back far. All right, so I'm going to go right here to the dashboard. And so I am logged in, and I want to make a game right now. And let's say that, um, well, am I logged in? Yes, I'm logged in. There's my icon. There's my name. And right now, let's pretend I want to, um, oh, let's, let's create a quiz. And let's say that this is just going to be a quick exit quiz after a lesson on volume. And so my name of my quiz is going to be volume of solids. This will be for geometry. And then I'm going to hit next. And then it asks, what kind of question do you want? So maybe I want um, a multiple choice. And I'm going to say, um, I, want it, I want an image. So I'm going to find an image right now on Google. And I'm going to find an image of a rectangular prism. And so I'm going to click on images. And I want one that has the numbers there. So here's one. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on this and I'm going to hit save image as and it'll just go to my downloads as prism. So then I can go over here to my quizzes game and I'm going to say determine the area or the volume, excuse me, of the prism. And now I'm going to add an image and that's that media button. And I'm going to upload this. I go to my downloads here and I find the word prism 
and I upload it and I make sure everything looks good, it looks good. And then I think, well, what are common mistakes that students would make? Um, a common mistake is they would add those three numbers together, definitely add them. So that would be 17 inches. Another common mistake is they would probably multiply these two numbers together, but then maybe add that. So maybe they'd call this 43. They might even think to call it cubic inches. So I'll leave the correct units. Of course, the correct answer is 120 cubic inches. I can put that key wherever I want. Quizzes will shuffle these items unless I tell them not to. And then the last item, maybe students would think just add the 17 and then another 17. Maybe they think they have to add it twice. So what I want to do when I'm putting in my distractors, of course, is put in the most common wrong answers that students have. Then I put down my key of 120 cubic inches. And then I want this to be about two minutes. And then I can hit save. OK, so that's my own item that I authored. Now, let's say I want to teleport or bring another item in here. So I'm going to hit teleport, and I have volume of solids. And I'm going to just scroll down. And as I hit on different things here, these change. Do you see? I like this one, this one right there. So what does the B in the volume formula V equals BH stands for? It stands for the base. So I'm going to add this. So I added that, and I just click out of it, and then I'm back on my own quiz. Or not. <laughs> I think I went too far back. So I have to find my draft. So that's, I'm in draft mode here. And I added this question. And I know that the correct answer should be area of the base. So I'm going to edit this. I think that is going to edit my title. Nope. It, I'm able to edit this um, question. So area of the base is good. Bottom of the box, box or between. OK, um, we can go with that. And maybe that's all I want. I just want a quick exit quiz. So I might change this title now to say exit quiz. And then I think that this question is now 30 seconds. It changes when you go back to edit it. So I'm putting it back to two minutes. OK. And the only thing I need is an image up here. So maybe I'll just put that same prism image. Why not? And by the way, you don't need an image. It just makes your quizzes um, more memorable and, and I guess a higher quality. And you can put down the grade. I mean, really, fifth graders all the way up to high school should be able to do this. And it's visible to everyone. And so I'm now going to hit Save. All right, now that I've hit save, at this point, I can um, do a couple of things. I'm going to go back to my dashboard. So I click over here. I might have to go back just to get my little buttons. I'm always looking for this. Yeah, my buttons, which are here. All right. So, the, oh, shoot, it went to draft. And I went forward because it's really not a draft. Oh, I have to hit done, of course, hit done. All right, so now, <laughs> that's what I forgot. So now that I've hit done, now at this point, I can assign it as a homework. Um, and even though I'm doing it in class as, a, as an exit quiz, it can still be called homework. So I am going to say, let's say I want it done by May 30th because somebody's absent and I just want to push it out. And then I say, I don't even assign it to classes, really. I just do um, how many attempts can students take this quiz? Maybe for an exit quiz, two. I only want to validate their answers. I don't want to say that the answers are on or off because some students, if you put the answers on, they'll memorize those answers the second time they do it. Um, power ups, yes, that's a really fun thing. Timer, students get nervous when they see the timer, so I leave that off. They like the leaderboard. Um, I like to shuffle the questions if this is an exit quiz. If this is a class game where they would play with a partner, I would not shuffle the questions. I would not shuffle the answer choices. Um, but I will shuffle it if it's a 
exit quiz. And then redemption question is always fun. If they get one wrong, they can go back. And the memes are always fun too. So I'm ready to go. I'm going to hit um, continue. And then what I do is I write this code on the board and I, and they know it's joinmyquiz.com. They type that code in and they can complete the exit quiz right there. Now I want to show you something else. I want to show you how you can print this quiz. Okay. So I have to remember where that is. So I'm going to go to find, I'm going to go to my quizzes and I'm going to find the most recent one that I just did is up at the top. And here's the printer icon. So you can print and what it does, it takes what was a digital quiz and it turns it into what would be a PDF. Of course, you're going to want to cut off the answer key at the bottom. But um, from there, you can literally just print right to your printer and hand that to the student who needs the paper copy. So I hope that gives you a sense of how to go about creating and assigning a test on quizzes. And... So we talked about the fact that quizzes is meeting this be best practice that the Commissioner of Education is saying for engagement. And we mentioned that it has both synchronous and asynchronous capabilities. We talked about the fact that you can get as fancy as you want. You know, you can get great leverage out of quizzes even in the beginner mode. And there's a lot of steps, but you don't have to make it so difficult. You can just find a quiz and assign it. Uh, lots of things I love about quizzes. And I'm at the end of my um, presentation. So if I can help you with anything, please, by all means, uh, just shoot me an email. And I'd love to help.